So uh, the healthcare system of Pakistan basically, I'll give an overview of it, uh, just as uh, something that you should know about. It's uh, it's uh, divided into public and private sectors, basically, and health it comes under the domain of the provincial government. Okay, and healthcare delivery is both the uh, comes under the you know, federal government as well as the provincial government. So overall, in the constitution of Pakistan, health the uh, the responsibility of health comes under the provincial government. And the districts, which are a smaller sector, they are mainly responsible for implementation. So whatever policies and whatever programs are being devised by the government and the uh, province, they are run by the districts. Okay, uh, coming towards uh, the service delivery, it includes the preventive, promotive, curative and rehabilitative services. So we basically have four types of service, service deliveries in our key, key care system of health in Pakistan. So the curative and rehabilitative services uh, come under the secondary and tertiary care facilities. Sorry. Uh, sorry. Okay. Okay. So, uh, health delivery system in Pakistan, it uh, comprises of preventive and promotive services. On the other hand, and mainly it's mainly provided to various national programs and community health workers who interface with the communities through primary health care facilities and outreach activities. And it's the country overall that provides health care to a three tiered system of uh, health care delivery and it has a range of public health interventions. So there are some government and or semi government organizations as well, like the armed forces that are staffed, such as Sui Gas, there's Wapda, there's Railway Power Body Foundation, and employees, social security institutions which provide health services to their employees and their dependents through their own systems. So they collectively cover about 10% of the population, but they only do it for their own people who work in their companies. And the private sector, it, it constitutes a diverse group of doctors, their nurses, their pharmacists, traditional healers, their drug vendors, and lab technicians, shopkeepers, and unqualified practitioners also, um, unfortunately. This is uh, uh, the whole healthcare delivery system of Pakistan, basically. So what does the first level care have in it? It's the basic health units, the BHUs and the RHCs or the rural health centers. And the, the founding uh, fundamentals of primary healthcare model. So primarily the, uh, the first level of care where the patient needs to go is the basic health unit or the rural health center, uh, which is closest to them. What happens with us, we mostly go to the tertiary care facilities and that is why they are so overburdened instead of going to the BHU, which is so under equipped due to which we are forced to go to the uh, tertiary health care facilities for even minor illnesses. So, uh, okay, the secondary system, the care system, it uh, comprises of the Tehsil headquarter hospitals, the THQs, as well as the district health uh, head, headquarter hospitals, the DHQs. And the first and second level care facilities provide the acute ambulatory and inpatient care. So patients can also uh, be admitted in, uh, in these uh, first and secondary care facilities. And coming towards the tertiary care, uh, care hospitals, they are mostly teach teach teaching hospitals like ours. And uh, coming towards the national health infrastructure, Currently, uh, according to the recent uh, figures, there are around 1,201 hospitals, 5,518 basic health care units, there are 683 rural health care centers, 5,802 dispensaries, 731 maternity and child health centers, and 347 tuberculosis centers. And the total availability of beds in these health facilities is around uh, 0.12 million. So it's 1, uh, 1 lakh 23,394 to be specific. There are more than 95,000 lady health workers who provide primary health care services to the community through the health houses. 
So what are the key issues of concern in Pakistan in the healthcare delivery system of Pakistan? There's high population growth. Okay, in our, uh, especially in our uh, uh, urban areas, there's high population growth, which uh, the healthcare facilities, although uh, as much as they can, uh, they can, they cannot perform as much as they should because of the high population outburst. And even there's an uneven distribution of health professionals. So instead of uh, having more health professionals in the basic health units, the first level care facilities, which are mostly uh, in the rural areas also, for example, the RHCs, we have more of the health care professionals in the tertiary care facilities. There is deficient workforce, insufficient funding, and limited access to quality health care services. Coming towards the private sector, the rising population pressure on the state health institutions has allowed the private sector to bridge the gap of rising demand and limited public health facilities. So uh, there's a number, there are a number of private hospitals, clinics, and diagnostic labs that have increased tremendously and they're contributing health services in the country. And the majority of them have the sole responsibility or partnership with uh, a model of organization. And the standalone clinics also in uh, across Pakistan, they are the major providers of outpatient care, and majority of these clinics fall in the sole proprietorship category. So health, uh, the public sector has played a dominant role in the provision of health facilities and training basically of manpower. This, this is a very big strength of the public health care facilities. And in urban areas, the private care uh, sector plays a more dominant role as far as the facilities are concerned and an increasing role in training of physicians as well as nurses. So this, these are uh, the latest figures. Uh, you have figures of 2012 and 2017. So there are around uh, 152,368 registered doctors in 2012, which have now risen in 2017 to 1,95,000. Registered dentists have risen from 11,000 to 18,000 in 2017. Registered nurses from 77 to 99,000. Population per doctor. So there, are one, there was one doctor per 1,162 uh, people. And now the population has increased so much that the number of doctors has been obviously reduced. And uh, population per dentist has also reduced from 15,000 to 10,658 in 2017. Population per bed has increased from 1,647 to 15, uh, to, sorry, to, uh, has decreased from 1,647 to 1,584. This is a distribution <coughs> that has been taken from your textbook, Elias. And um, according to this, there uh, this is distribution of uh, health uh, services in uh, in Sindh basically. There's one vaccinator per 19,000 population, covering 80 square kilometers plus six 765 newborns. One malaria supervisor per 58,389 population, covering 1,239 square kilometers. One midwife per 31,794 population. One microscopist per 383,377 population and one guy who is a trained midwife per, per 20,289. So the government of Pakistan has a, as a major provider of service in the health sector and it's constantly either upgrading exist, existing health facilities or is establishing new health institutions. And uh, in all, because the population is growing at a tremendous rate, so in order to uh, cater to all their concerns, this is a major um, uh, this is a major achievement of the government of Pakistan. On an average, one health facility is available for eleven thousand people and one bed for fourteen hundred fifty persons. So as you can see that we have a lot, we, uh, we uh, the uh, government of Pakistan is uh, providing a lot of facilities, but because of the rising population and because of, um, of the increased migration from the rural to the urban areas, the, the services cannot be enough. Now coming towards multi-sectoral <coughs> collaboration or partnership. 
So what it what it is? I I I want to ask all of you if you know anything about it. Multi-sectoral collaboration. What does it mean? I have hidden the slide. If any one of you can answer, what is multi-sectoral collaboration or coordination, whatever you call it, or multi-sectoral partnership? What do you understand from the term? Anyone? Multi-sectoral collaboration, multi-sectoral partnership, or public-private partnership. What do you understand of it? Come on, third years. Students can unmute themselves. Uh, you can text it here. You can uh, type a message here. I don't want an answer from Google, not copy pasting. I want your idea. What do you think it is? Even if you're wrong about it, I just want some input. What is multi-sectoral collaboration? I guess different departments work together. Yes, you're very close. Multi-sectoral collaboration, multiple, yes. Any, anyone else? Thank you, Muzamil. One more answer. Different organizations working together for a common goal. Very good. Different hospital sectors collaborating. Okay, fair enough. Okay, thank you, Shaima. I hope I'm pronouncing your name correct. Different sectors working together for the same purpose. Yes. Multiple sectors. It can be the educational sector. It can be the environmental sector. Thank you, Sara. Thank you, Maria. And it can be uh, the educational sector, the engineering sector. You can have architects. In, you are building a hospital, for example. You need different sectors to be involved in it. You need different people funding for the hospital. You need different minds working together to set up a hospital. So it's not only the. It it, it cannot be possible only for a doctor to do that. Okay. So you need different funders, you need, you need international organizations, you need input from various people in businesses, you need, you need multiple engineers working on it. Okay. So that, this is known as multi-sectoral collaboration or interaction, whatever you call it. It refers to the deliberate collaboration among various stakeholders. Now they should have a stake. Okay. And uh, Okay. And uh, there are different, uh, for example, the government, the civil society, the private sector, and sec uh, the, for example, you have the health sector, you have, and the environmental, uh, environmentalists, you have the economists to jointly achieve one outcome. Okay. So by when you're engaging multiple sectors, these partners can leverage knowledge, they have the expertise, they have uh, they can reach and uh, they have increased reach and resources. Probably a doctor cannot go and collect funds as much as an economist might have that power to gather funds. He might have different strategies, he or she might have different strategies through which the hospital would be funded and resources and uh, be benefiting from their combined and very, very strength as they work to together to to obtain one common goal or health outcome. So it results when the government, the non-profit, the private, the public organizations, community groups, you have people also, you have the public as well, the armed group and individual community members come together to solve problems that affect the whole community. And in other words, it's, uh, it can solve systemic problems of a community. And what are those systemic problems? They involve a community's systems rather than one isolated area. It's not only malaria that they're treating. It's not, it's not only failing education uh, or healthcare system. It's, 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 it's the whole system of the community that is affected. Community-wide economic problems, you have uh, environmental problems or a number of interrelated problems. So a community, uh, a multi-sectoral interaction will help to work on the entire system and not only on one area. 
so when you are solving it said when you are solving a systemic problem you can't cure one leaf without treating the whole tree that's how it's taken so multi sectoral collaborations have the capacity to solve the systemic problems because they draw on the resources of all the sectors you have the business people you have the government you have non profit organizations and the list goes on they can exert more power than just one organization or even a group of similar organizations i hope that's clear now so we'll take an example of um, of this baltimore united uh, in leadership development build a uh, strategy and african american grassroots organization which approached the great greater baltimore uh, committee the town's primary business organizations to establish one partnership the purpose of this was to solve the problems that impacted the entire community such as high unemployment we had a failing educational system and unskilled workforce what this organization did was that it it uh, it could see some links between the needs of their own constituents and the needs of the business community so the gbc it in uh, this uh, greater baltimore community uh, committee it organized uh, organized those links yeah, or linked people together together the two groups had enough influence to pressure a reluctant city government to improve its ineffective educational system so they had to work on that so eventually this partnership expanded to include the mayor's office they approached the mayor's office several government organizations as well as city public schools so they have multiple sectors working on one common goal together they collaborated and developed programs and incentives to keep students in school and prepare them to be skilled workers so they are talking about education as well as the unemployment that was going uh, prevailing over there the collaborator met bills need the uh, need for improved education for its community members including better prospects for employment for them while gbc met its need for a skilled workforce so uh, they had <coughs> achieved their goals and talking about partnership it's more than just collaboration on ad hoc projects it is about moving beyond for independent results to a relationship that involves co-creation shared risks and responsibilities interdependency and organizational transformation so true partnership is about identifying shared values and leveraging the combined strength of each partner so it's not only one person who's adding it's all the other persons who are adding to achieve one goal to achieve a level of impact that could not be accomplished independently and there are different sectors uh, that are increasingly understanding sustainability citizens and markets in the same way through the lens of shared values <coughs> sorry and business can identify opportunities in increasing addressing the social problems and in the context of global goals shared uh, value represents the the coming together of market potential social demands and policy action in order to create more sustainable and inclusive pathway to economic growth prosperity and well-being of all So this is the figure that was taken. So here you have the principles, the dark, <coughs> the dark uh, green color. You have the private sector, you have the public sector, and the civil or uh, civil society or the NGOs. And they have certain principles that they work on. They have uh, that is that are the the best of interest in, of the government. They are the best interest of the society. They have the best interest of the private sector, and they have certain approaches. <coughs> they have certain community based approach they have market based approach depending upon their uh their strengths where do where, which which domain do they work for and the policy based approach so yeah so the public sector will be working on the policy based approach likewise the private sector will be working on market based approach and civil society will be working on community based approach what is the ultimate goal for the private sector the well-being of markets public sector the well-being of citizens and the best uh, the, the civil society would be going for the well-being of the society these are their desired outcomes this line shows their desired outcomes and then what is their ultimate goal it is sustained well-being of market citizens planet and the society that is their shared goal this is just an example of uh, of multi sectoral collaboration how it can work 
So public health problems, they are complex and in many cases, a single health issue may be influenced by many interrelated social, environmental, economic factors that can be addressed through a holistic, multi-sectoral approach and that is the best way. What are the advantages? <clears throat> they promote an internal culture that values and fosters collaboration and sharing of uh, as a uh, key operating principle. They establish systems and structures and that help garner and facilitate communication. So there's more communication in between them. It's not just that there's a, um, there's a um, government led institute that's doing everything and they have no, uh, the, the private sector has no say in it or the civil society doesn't have any say in it. No, there's communication throughout <clears throat> the organization. They assign responsibilities for collaboration in job descriptions of relevant staff. So they pick out relevant staff and they give them certain jobs that they can do best. Okay. And they mobilize funds, resources to allow the staff members to participate in partnership activities and events. And they routinely monitor and as you can routinely monitor and assess the benefits of partnership and its impacts on the work mission, work products, and the achievements. And the highest performance at the highest performance level, the individuals and organizations develop and sustain strong supportive relationship with other organizations or groups, divisions, and communities. So coming towards the public private partnership in Pakistan, <clears throat> you have many examples. The concept of co cooperation between the public and the private provision. This is also sort of multi-sectoral collaboration of uh, healthcare. This was inst introduced, uh, in, uh, st this started in Pakistan in the national health policy in 1960, and it started as a model of corporate social responsibility in order to serve the nation's health needs. So PPP, the public-private partnership, as they're now called, are a health sector reform to create long-term and something that is task-oriented. It has certain tasks that are with, on which you have to work on and formal relationships among the public and the private sectors in sharing their core competencies and resources, which includes some degree of joint decision making and innovative interaction to provide sustainable improvements in the provision and enhanced utilization of health. So the ultimate goal is the health of, for all. Uh, and it also addresses emerging health challenges for the benefit of the entire society. So coming towards the examples in Pakistan, there was a mobile doctor's program that was run by a tobacco company since 1980. It's been running in the tobacco cultivation areas and at their factories as a part of their corporate social responsibility strategy. So it has multiple doctors, it has uh, the tobacco company also, it has media people also who are uh, together working upon curbing tobacco, uh, tobacco use. And the national program for malaria, tuberculosis, HIV AIDS control, uh, it was implemented through a collaboration of the government and the private healthcare providers, and they included <coughs> various NGOs. The Ministry of Health was involved, the, uh, and the NGOs like the Green Star Network, the Asia Foundation, and Health Net International, the WHO itself, the US, UNDP, and World Bank. They supported through funds, and the Ministry of Finance, the government of Pakistan. And uh, apart from this, you have the example of Health and Nutritional Development, uh, Development Society, HANS, and it's an NGO uh, in partnership with the Sindh government to provide primary health care services at uh, the DHUs in Karachi. The Alpha University, uh, Karachi, uh, a private sector partnership which works with Sindh government to provide primary health care services where they cannot reach. So with the government, they go to, uh, they have, have reached to the rural and urban slum community for disease surveillance, vaccines, drug trials, for example. Heart file is an NGO in partnership with the government, the International Vaccine Institution, Institute South, uh, from South Korea, Korea, the WHO, Save the Children, UNICEF, it, and it's, uh, it's involved in uh, controlling the uh, NCDs, the non-communicable diseases. And there's a Ministry of Population Welfare and United States Agency for International Development Partnership 
which established a social marketing program called the Green Star, and their uh, uh, objective was to increase the contraceptive use among uh, males and females, married couples. And then you have Procter and Gamble. Gamble, it's a private company that educates young mothers about the healthy um, baby care practices, and it also teaches children five to nine years old about the basic hygiene habits using their activities in the company's marketing strategy. Then coming towards a very uh, well-known example, the People's Primary Healthcare Initiative. And it was a government program uh, uh, that, uh, that was launched in Pakistan with the objective of uh, to uh, revitalize the delivery of health services in the rural areas of Sindh. And they were outsourced to the private sector. It was a government setup that was outsourced that, they gave, uh, that wanted resources from the private sector. So the private sector ran those hospitals, those centers. <clears throat> it started in 2014 and uh, CPHI since manages 1140 primary healthcare facilities through funding uh, uh, the, uh, provided by the government of Pakistan. And uh, you also have